They are the insiders, Chris Johnston, Pierre Lebrun, and Darren Drager on the heels of Canada's huge win in the gold medal game. Some big international hockey news on the horizon. Darren? Yeah, the World Junior Hockey Championship, as confirmed by President of the IIHF, Luke Tardif, will be held in Alberta in mid-August. I think we can be a bit more specific. The targeted dates are August 8th to the 19th, but they need full sign-off from the participating teams. They should get that by the end of the Olympics. However, I wouldn't expect some of the headline players specifically for Team Canada like Owen Power, Cole Perfetti, maybe Mason McTavish to be part of this. It's not etched in stone but their focus more likely to be on NHL training and NHL camps. Now in the meantime you have got the ongoing discussion between the NHL and the Players Association on the 2024 World Cup of Hockey. There was a meeting between the two groups Thursday morning. I'm told that the double IHF is very much interested in bringing the World Cup of Hockey back. However, there are some NHL owners that need more information. Again, you're talking about uh, a shutdown of the regular season of the National Hockey League if they host it in February. So preliminary is the key word. A lot of work to be done before they sign off on the World Cup of Hockey in 2024. That would be a big commitment from the NHL. Listen, for some teams, the pre-trade deadline plan is pretty cut and dry. But for others, it's a shifting landscape. Could the Canucks be reconsidering their plans, Pierre? Well, it depends on who you ask. Certainly, I checked with a couple of NHL front offices over the past few days who feel that when they talk to Vancouver lately, that it feels like JT Miller has been reeled back in by the Canucks. Now, we're a month away from the trade deadline, so perhaps a bit of cat and mouse. But I think the message is clear from the Vancouver Canucks to other teams. They don't feel they have to trade JT Miller. He's got a year and a half on his deal. And this notion that JT Miller is worth is higher now than it would be this summer, the Canucks front office does not believe that. They feel they can get as much for him this summer as they can now. And by the way, maybe they'll just sign him this summer. So all options are on the table. Translation is this. If you're the New York Rangers or any other team, you have got to step up in a meaningful way to get the Canucks' attention on JT Miller or else they're happy to keep him. Cap gymnastics may never become an official Olympic event, but Chris, is it now becoming a much-needed skill in the NHL? It is, specifically for a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, you know, you look to the move Thursday where they've put Adam Brooks on waivers one day after reclaiming him from Vegas, and that leaves some people scratching their head. But when you look at that actual transaction, should he clear on Friday, as expected, the Leafs reclaim some center depth, a uh, player that they did draft once upon a time. They actually opened up a little bit of cap space with the series of moves that they would have had to make. And I think that this is a good reminder in these next four weeks to really closely scrutinize what Toronto does. Because while they have a tight cap, Gino, I believe that they're looking for a forward, potentially, in addition to their stated number one priority of adding a defenseman as well. Yeah, and speaking of that, Chris, uh, one name to keep an eye on with the Leafs and other contenders is a name that's more under the radar in terms of defenseman, Justin Braun. Not a very sexy name, but at this time of year, those are the type of trades that, while they don't get a lot of attention, those are the type of playoff additions that end up paying off. Justin Braun, who has played 100 career NHL playoff games, he's playing in a top-four role in Philly. The Flyers are going to deal him. He's a pending UFA. He only makes $1.8 million, and to be honest, that's probably one of the reasons why the Flyers have heard from half a dozen teams over the last couple of weeks. Carolina's another team that's called. We'll see where this goes. He's not a plan A guy. He's probably not even a plan B guy but he's on a lot of lists in case teams strike out on bigger names on defense. Earlier this week, they rolled out video of the Coyotes' new 5,000-seat arena that's still under construction. It was pretty sad to think of an NHL team calling that home, even temporarily. And now the Players Association is voicing some concerns about it, Chris? Yeah, well, there's, as if there isn't enough to talk about between the league and the Players Association, you know, another item on their agenda is, is what happens with hockey-related revenue and who covers potential losses with the Coyotes going to a 5,000-seat arena. And it's, you know, a little early in those talks to forecast where exactly it ends up, Gino. But, you know, at this point in time, the players are worried that they're going to have to foot half the bill if the Coyotes do uh, lower their HRR number, and that's something they're working through with the NHL. They are the insiders, Chris Johnston, Pierre Lebrun, and Darren Dreger.